Are you struggling to decide which technology to use for your mobile app? Do you want to know the difference between native and cross-platform development? Curious about no-code solutions and their benefits? In today's video, we'll dive into app technology and discuss choosing the best mobile app technology stack for your business or startup. My name is Andrei Sambir and you are on the Building Digital Products channel, where we discuss practical technologies and approaches that can immediately boost your business and drive to success. To start, it's essentially to grasp the concept of mobile app tech stack. A tech stack is the combination of tools, frameworks, technologies that developers use to build mobile apps. It has four main components client apps, backend, storage, and APIs. Now, you may wonder that these terms mean. Let me break it down for you. Client apps. The client apps are what users see and interact with. It includes the user interface, UI, and user experience, UX. In simple terms, it's the visual part of the app. That's exactly what you download from the App Store or Play Market. Here, you work a lot in the visual part of your app. It looks and feels, and the animation part. Be sure everything is smooth and user-friendly. In this part, you need to think if our app is dependable from internet connection or can operate fully offline. How to attract and keep users. And all that is called best user design. Backend. The backend is like the engine room of the app where all the behind the scenes work happen. It's responsible for processing data, managing user accounts and handling communication between the front end and the database. On the backend side, you can use various programming languages and frameworks to build a robust and scalable infrastructure. Some popular options include Python, Ruby on Rails, Node.js or PHP. All of these name above are highly leveraged programming languages and frameworks that are often used to write solid backend code. Which exactly to choose? Well, that depends on the goal of your app and requirements, but I will not cover them in this video. Between, if you are interested in what language you better use for the backend of your application and why, let us know in the comment. Except for programming languages, you also use other libraries and frameworks. We don't want to develop bicycle every time, right? For example, for real-time communication features such as live streaming or chat, popular backend framework include WebSockets and Sockets.io. For video streaming, specifically, you may use WebRTC and HLS HTTP live streaming. In case everything I told you about sounds too complicated, don't worry. Nowadays, lots of the solutions already exist and you can use ready APIs to operate with your app data. And sometimes even skip the backend part at all and use serverless architecture instead. However, in case you have complicated business logic, you still need the backend part. Storage. The storage part is like the app's library, where all the data generated by the app is stored and managed. This can include user profiles, app content, and more. For data storage, popular database management system include MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, and Firestore. You also can use ORM frameworks such as SQLize, Mongoose, and Hibernate to interact with databases. Last but not least part of mobile apps are APIs. APIs, or Application Programming Interface, are the communication channels between different parts of the app and external services. Think of them like an app telephone system. Some services provide you with the data and information, you can just call it when you need it. A good example can be PayPal or Stripe. Payment API, which you may use in your app to get payments from users. Now, note for the nerd. Yes, we know that usually you need to use a native Apple payment system or Google. However, there are still ability to use external API for this. And this is a perfect example to explain it simple and understandable. So that's only explanation in this video. The conclusion for this part. Choosing the right tech stack is crucial to your app's performance scalability and development time. So really, focus here. I mean really. Or connect with someone who is experienced. Native and cross-platform app development. First, let's talk about essential decision when choosing a mobile app tech stack. Native or cross-platform development. To put it simply, native apps are built specifically for one platform, like iOS or Android, while cross-platform apps work on multiple platforms with a single code base. 
Again, you write code once and then compile onto different operating system. Native apps offer excellent performance, full access to device features such as GPS and camera, and consistent user experience. TikTok, for example, a native app uses the platform-specific technologies in iOS and Android to ensure smooth performance and seamless integration with the device feature. Pokemon Go, another native app, benefits from direct access to GPS, accelerometer, and gyroscope, providing an engaging augment reality experience for users. On the other hand, cross-platform apps are more cost-effective and faster to develop, as you only need one code base for multiple platforms. Some popular cross-platform frameworks technologies include React Native, developed by Facebook, Xamarin, a Microsoft-owned framework, and Flutter, an open-source framework by Google for building multi-platform applications. There are some other frameworks, but let's focus on the most popular ones. So, React Native, a popular cross-platform framework allows developers to write code in JavaScript and deploy it to both iOS and Android. With a large community, numerous third-party libraries and big names like Slack and Airbnb using it, React Native has become a go-to choice for many developers. For instance, as mentioned, Slack used React Native to reduce development time and cost while maintaining a consistent user experience. Another great example of using React Native is the digital product story, an interactive storytelling platform developed by LinkUp Studio. This platform enables users to explore and engage with various cultural and historical sites through the mobile devices, providing an impressive and educational experience across different platforms. By using React Native, Story benefited from a shorter development time, reduced cost, and unified code base that made it easier to maintain and update the app for both iOS and Android users. Flutter on the other hand, is an open-source UI toolkit created by Google. It uses the Dart programming language and enables developers to build natively compiled applications for multiple platforms. The framework has been gaining traction thanks to its expressive UI and high-performance capabilities. One notable example it is the Alibaba Group, which adopted Flutter to build its app, serving millions of users a visual appealing and smooth user experience. Surprisingly, with cross-platform technologies like Flutter, you can even develop games. A perfect example is the game Landover, developed by LinkUp using Flutter. Landover is an addictive and exciting strategy game where players build their empires, expand their territories and compete with others to become the ultimate rulers. The gameplay involves resource management, strategic planning, and engaging battles. With its captivating graphics, seamless performance, and impressive experience, Landover showcase the versatility and the capabilities of cross-platform solution. No code, we ask coding solutions. Another crucial decision you'll need to make is whether to use no-code or coding solution. No-code tool allow you to build mobile apps without writing any code, while coding solutions require developers to write code using specific programming languages and frameworks. No-code solutions are perfect for non-technical entrepreneurs who want to bring their ideas to life quickly and cost-effectively. Some popular no-code platforms include Bubble and Adalo, for example. These tools offer drag-and-drop interfaces, pre-built templates, and out-of-the-box integrations. However, they may lack the flexibility and customization options that coding solutions provide. Real-world example. Bubble, a node-code platform, was used to create Dividend Finance, an app that simplifies managing investment. With Bubble's visual interfaces and drag-and-drop functionality, the creators of Dividend Finance were able to build their app quickly and cost-effectively, without need any coding knowledge. This is a perfect example how no-code solution can empower non-technical entrepreneurs to bring their ideas to life. Wrapping app, making the best choice for your app. In conclusion, Choosing the right technology depends on several factors, including your app's requirement, your target audience, your budget, and your technical expertise. While native development and coding solutions offer more customization and better performance, cross-platform and no-code solutions can save you time and resources. As we discussed, both React Native and Flutter are powerful cross-platform frameworks that can help you build feature-rich, high-performance apps for multiple platforms simultaneously. Remember that there are no one-size-fits-all solution. You must evaluate the pros and cons of each approach and choose the one that best aligns with your business goals. 
So let's recap. If you are looking for a proof of concept, a prototype to show investors or want to validate your idea, no code solution should work for you well. For a mobile app that can scale and support a large user base with the cost effectiveness and high performance, cross-platform technologies are often the most practical choice for you. Lastly, if your app requires low-level access to device features and complex algorithms, native development may be necessary, but be prepared for higher cost and longer development time. With these considerations in mind, you can make an informed decision about the best approach of your app. If you ever have an idea of an app, share it in the comments below and we'll provide you advice on how to best to get started with it. We hope this video has provided you with valuable insights and guidance on making this crucial decision. Good luck with your app development journey. Thank you for joining us today on building digital products. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions or suggestion, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you have an idea of your app development, feel free to contact us and we'll help you to build the best digital products. Today, you have been with Andre Sambir. We'll see you in the next video.